Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Also follow me on Instagram so you can get the sneak peek of what to expect next. For this episode, it's Greenleaf Season 5, Episode 4, entitled The Fourth Day. For those of you who are newbies, I give a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side and at the end, I give my review and discussion questions. No need to dig around. I put all of the minute marks in the comments. I got the recap for you coming up next. Grace and Noah agree that AJ should be brought home. But the doctor is saying that, you know, a residential facility may be best because of the individual progression that he can make. And Grace is frustrated and saying that you said family and the support right now is the best thing that we can do. And the doctor says, yes, I did say that, but a facility would give him more of an individual support and release him from any previous controls he may feel. We have to give you all options, but if you feel that bringing him home is best, then that's fine, but it's ultimately up to AJ. And the doctor says to AJ once he walks into the room, do you prefer to do patient therapy or go home today? It's up to you. And AJ says that if it's up to him, he wants to go home, but he wants to go home with him, indicating Noah. And Grace seems very saddened and confused about his decision. Bishop is very upset that Jacob would even insinuate that he had any involvement with the murder. And now you've put a target on my back when it comes to speculation. And Jacob insists that, hey, Tara is not that type of person and that he just wanted to use that information against Carissa and that she's nothing like Rochelle. We can kind of trust Tara. And Lady May is upset because it may have been placed in her head, the seed in her head, that the green leaves are some sort of evil family. And Jacob reaffirms that Aaron wants to go over the information concerning the will. And Lady May says that, look, I want Bishop to be in that meeting because I don't trust how you're handling everything. I want him to be there. And everything that you've been, that you've had going on, and even your deceiving wife, Carissa, she's really getting on my last nerve. And Carissa's all about helping black people, but is pitching against you while sleeping in the home and that we pay for and her son agrees and you know and says that look I I, I he tries to explain her, himself and Lady May says I can't I love you but I just can't seem to, to just look at your face right now just get out and Lady May wants to know if Bishop wants to go to Calvary before the demolition and Bishop is saying hey I don't want any part of that it's over and what's the point in going back after a meeting with the board, Phil, Charity, and Judy talk, and they go over some more information concerning the events before the church closes. And Judy wants a presentation of what to expect for the new property, but Charity says, you know, it's best to close the church, giving them an idea of what to expect. There needs to be uplifting music. People need to think this is what I can expect when I go to the new H&H &H and songs and anything uplifting is best. And letting them know that closing it on a high note would be the best choice. But of course, Judy wants it her way and reminds Charity of who's the boss. She wants to know, are we remembering your father killing someone else, the deception and the FBI investigating you or your uncle that was a molester? All while Grace is eavesdropping on the other side of the door, surprised at Charity's defenses and what she's saying back to Judy. Judy puts her foot down and Phil confirms to her that, hey, what Judy says goes and I'm agreeing with her decision. After they walk off, Grace says that I saw and heard everything and she pulls her to the side so they can speak privately. And Grace says, you know, is... Grady Demore Phil Demore's mother and Charity's like yeah but she's but she's dead and Grace says you know Darius and I may have found a way to get H&H &H before the wrecking ball swings and look I see the way that he threatened you are you in or are you out 
after a cut back to the next scene, it's evident that they've been talking about the Dumars a little bit more because Charity wants to know what did his mother do for Bob? And Grace says, I don't know what it was specifically, but every document with Enville lending that D Darius dug up has her name as a controller or a VP. They got Darius fired and that lets us know that the paper is endorsing Bob for running for senator. And help us find the information about his father. I need to know about his father because when it comes to making the decision, Charity is still thinking about her role as AP for H&H. &H. And Grace is like, you got to be kidding because H&H &H is going to continue to allow you to work in their shadows for years. I mean, look at Phil. And Charity finally says, you know what? You're not going to find Marcus Dumar. Phil's father doesn't exist. And Grace says, well, what do you mean? She says, well, at least that name. His father was a Black Panther and changed his name. And Phil and him really don't get along. His name is Yusef Shabazz. And he lives in New Orleans in the French quarters. And Grace thanks her for that information. Lady May storms into Carissa's room because she's tired of a mess and she wants her to get out. And Carissa says that she didn't want the divorce. It's it's Jacob who wanted that divorce because she had an affair. But she forgave him after all of the affairs that he had. And he even had an affair with the previous housekeeper before the one that they have now. And she explains that she used the will to press Jacob to get information and things that she wanted, but says that she wants to stay and work these things things out and Carissa says that if you can convince him to forgive me I'll just forget everything and but if not it's it's game on and it's a war and I'm just gonna keep going with what I have Lady May is floored to hear about his behavior and she has some sort of understanding of what she's going through and she seems like she's willing to help to convince her son Aaron explains that the second will does supersede the first one and legally the house belongs to Bishop and they shouldn't be concerned with what a jury would say but it's the perception of what people may think that he killed him just for the ownership of the house. As he's explaining that Lady May wants Bishop to get everything in order because she lost the church and she doesn't want to lose the house. She also demands to speak with Jacob in private and before leaving the room Jacob says that to Aaron aren't you glad that you're not related and Aaron can't help but to respond with a I'm glad to be of service and Bishop tells Lady May that he's gonna do any and everything to try to make sure that everything's okay Grace calls Yusef and he gives her kudos for pronouncing his name correctly and he wants to know if she's a cop and she says no until recently I was a pastor and he says hey that's strike one and she says sir your wife pre previously worked for a company called Indel Lending and he says well first of all my ex-wife and she's been dead for over 20 years that's strike two and she says, you know, well, your son Phil, and he says, that's strike three, you're out, and he hangs up. Lady May is very clearly upset with Jacob, and she has a fire behind giving him several scriptures from the Bible concerning forgiveness, not to pass judgment on others, to fix his marriage and forgive his wife. And Jacob says, well, I, it's evident that you've talked to Carissa. And he says, yes, I've talked to Carissa, and I'm not taking sides. She says that your past behavior is something that delegated and forced her to do what she's doing. But clearly, you're just doing women a certain way. And it's obvious you think about women a certain way. And me. And Jacob says, you know, you've never done anything like that. And Lady May says that, what if I did? You just go in there and forgive her. And I'm not taking sides. And Jacob agrees to forgive Carissa and to move on. Charity wants to talk with Connie to approve a PowerPoint presentation about the history of Calvary because Judy and the pastor didn't approve it. And Connie says, well, you ask them, why are you coming to me? And Charity explains that she wanted, you know, her opinion. And she says their decision has already been made and I disapprove as well. I can't think of anything worse. And she walks off. 
<laughs> this scene gave me a chuckle, honey. Bishop makes his way to the hood, to the new Revelation Mission location. And when he gets out the daddy mobile, the core, okay? The lady of uh, the night, okay, approaches Bishop, gets her little walk on. It's like, you know, she said, hey, yo, Bishop. <laughs> Can you teach me how to duggy? Hey, hey, cause I don't love me. Hey, teach me how to duggy, Bishop. Teach me how to duggy. <laughs> but Bishop ignores her and keeps on walking. <laughs> He gets inside, he sees Tara, and he says, I just want to set the record straight once and for all. Noah and AJ stop by to pick up AJ's things, and AJ is reluctant to hug Grace as he walks in. And as he goes up the stairs to get his belongings, Grace tells Noah, hey, here is information concerning who he can talk to, the dead doctor, the medicine. And AJ interrupts and says, see, this is why I didn't want to stay here. I just want to move on and forget about it. Can we just move on? And he continues to walk up the steps. And Grace tells Noah, this is important. And if you slack on getting him the help, I swear. And you could tell there's some static there. And as they're beginning that conflict, Lady May comes down to the end of the stairs interrupting their private conversation and lady may invites noah for some tea just to get a, get away and talk bishop tells tara that it wasn't me who called the house that night when your father died when i found out that your father died i wondered what he was doing there mac possibly made the call and he was the one who had the the fire set and Mrs. Mrs. Davis originally had that house to belong to your father originally and I have some documentation to, to prove that but she later amended that will and gave it to us and that will was drafted by Mac now we are in this together and you know we are looking back sadly and Tara says that she can't think of anything else but her father in those last moments in his life and how it ended and Bishop asked her what can I do to make things right so we can just move on Judy asked Charity if she asked Connie about the PowerPoint presentation and Charity confirms and Judy says well we already said no and you asked someone else we don't need you second-guessing what we say I'm soon to be first lady my father is Bob Whitmore and the only person here who has more power than me is God you're fired Charity storms into Phil's office and wants to know, what is the deal? Do you know that Judy fired me? And Phil already knows about it. And he agrees that she can't do things right and she can't take no for an answer. They already told her no. And Charity says, you know what? You can't fire me because I quit. When 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 you're with Judy, if you can if you can mash together her 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 tie ties together, it couldn't even match up to what I got and what you want and what you miss. There would never be another like me. Do you really think that that church? Do you do you really think that H and H is gonna do a good job without any of the green leaves helping? Do you really think that you're gonna be able to do what you think you're gonna do in the future? It's obvious that no, that's a no. And I thought that you were the man that I thought you were. I thought that you would prove me wrong somehow and just be this good person, but you're a waste. Womp womp. Bishop pull up in the daddy mobile. He like, you leaving? Where you going? I got some real plans some food. Like, ain't you staying? Let's just chill out. <laughs> but it's obvious that Grace, she's not at peace with the whole situation with AJ. One, AJ doesn't want to stay there and she knows she's played a big role in his life and how he feels about her and bishop says you know what don't think of it as if it's over let things take their time and don't give up on the situation and he's there to comfort her and let her know that just give things time and let's just let's just accept his decision it's his life and make some room for god to to move and do what he needs to do and remember one thing you came back after 20 years that means something jacob goes to talk to carissa to let him know that he talked to his mom and carissa says yeah you know just just apologize just say what you need to say 
And Jacob can't say anything. And she says, well, let me help you out. Just say, I forgive you for being with the man to replace the emptiness and all of the things that you made me feel. That you forgive me because I've forgiven you all of those times. But Jacob can't say anything. He can't say it. It's very obvious that Carissa is hurt to the core. And Carissa says, you know what? I'll lay off the will, but we are done. And Jacob agrees and says, I know. Zora and Sophia playfully try to convince AJ to stay. But he lets them know that he loves them for their efforts and it really means a lot but he's made the decision to leave already grace asked if she can speak with aj alone and he agrees and she says i just want to speak to you before you leave i know that you're leaving but if you could please see the doctor he cuts her off and he says yes i'll i'll go see the doctor and she wants to just make sure that he's okay and she looks at him and says, you know, you can always, anytime you can come back. And he says, yeah. He grabs his things and he slowly starts to leave the room. But when he leaves the room, he comes back and gives Grace a kiss on the top of her head. And that gives her so much happiness. And we can see those happy tears fall down her face. Phil tells Judy that since you fired Charity, I think her last words really mean something. She said that, you know, H&H &H won't last past Tuesday, and it seems like something was in the works. And Judy tries to help Phil relax by offering some of that sloppy toppy. But Phil isn't having it, and she asks, look, why won't you let me try? Is it because my marriage is not finalized yet? Just just give me a, a chance. Let's try to work this out. And she is trying to pop out the sausage, okay? But Phil says, hey, I'm not having it. No, he gets up, and he leaves the room. Bishop tries to convince Lady May that all the concerns about the house are over. I prayed with Tara. We cried. It's over. We said some tears. We did some prayer. But Lady May thinks it isn't over. And she says, I just don't feel like it's over with something. It's just unsettling to me. And he's like, don't worry about it. It's fine. He's tasting the food for dinner. And Jacob walks in and tells Lady May that he couldn't forgive Carissa. Not just because he can't forgive. And that's something that he will eventually do. But he didn't want that forgiveness to kind of allow him to go back into the marriage because he called the marriage a thing. He didn't want to get back into that thing called marriage. And Lady May says, look, no matter what happens between you two, you make sure you stay connected with your son. You stay connected with your children. Don't let what's happening between you and Carissa destroy that. Charity is happy to announce that she quit. And Bishop tells everyone to not forget that we are having church tomorrow here at home. We even see everybody start to sit down. Carissa finally comes to the table. She's a little bit agitated and irritated with Jacob. She's rolling her eyes. And Jacob looks like he just accepts her rolling her eyes and just ignores it. And as Bishop is addressing the family, his phone rings. And he's answer he's going to answer it. And people want to know, who is that? And he says, it's Tara. And Carissa says, well, who is Tara? And Lady May lets her know, because of you and your digging and your conniving ways, that you'll find out who Tara is eventually. Bishop tells the family who Tara is, that she's the daughter of Dale James, and that she wants to talk again, ASAP, and it's about the house. And that is the end of the episode. Another amazing episode, absolutely rewarding to see how the storylines are progressing. Now that end scene was like a refresher, right? It was finally good to see the entire family back at that green leaf table. It has been a while since we've seen that entire family sitting together with some sort of peace. We've even seen how Zora and Sophia look like women now. The last time we saw them at the table, they were preteens. So that lets you know the extent 
of how long the family turmoil has been happening and stuff that's been going on. The scene with AJ and Sophia, what a beautiful scene because that kiss on the top of the head said so much. It said, mommy, I don't hate you. I'm upset right now. Thank you for accepting that I want to stay with my dad. I really can't explain why, but there's there's clearly some static between him and the mother. But that kiss on the head said, Mama, I don't hate you. I'm learning to love you. I'm open to love you. That's why Grace had that tearful moment when she couldn't help but to, to shed some tears. Because as her father told her, you know, don't take this personal. Yeah, you have a lot to do with why he feels the way that he feels, but give it time. I love that conversation between father and daughter. He finally got her to understand don't try to understand everything now. You'll understand everything by and by. And that was a beautiful scene because body language says so much in times of need and things and situations where you really can't express how you feel. That kiss on the top of the head was beautiful. Now, Lady May, I have a few bones to pick with you. When will she spill the beans about Aaron? I mean, she's going around telling everybody else what to do and to forgive and how to move on. And the and, and those who haven't sinned cast the first stone. When will she finally just purge the truth? Now, we did get a sneak peek about what to expect for the next episode. But when I do reviews, I want to accompany what happened in this episode. So I'm pretending as if we didn't see the preview for the next episode but why did she wait so long and on the top of that why is Aaron waiting not to tell everybody the news was there something contractually that I missed that he really couldn't talk about it is it something that his father would on his death deathbed told him not to speak about let me know if I missed that because if it were me I would have told people a long time ago hey this is my mom this is the situation I can't wait on her to spill the beans and to tell the truth so what's up with that? I was definitely with Lady May when Bishop was telling her, hey, I talked to Tara, everything's cool. We even cried together. We prayed together. Everything's right. I shared that concern as a viewer, like, mm, doesn't seem that easy. If somebody came to me and said, hey, you know, this was originally meant for you, you know, via your father, you know, because he's deceased. I mean, so she would be next in line. Do you think that she has something legally to take to court and saying that, yeah, my father died, but technically I'm the daughter. Maybe she has some escheat property chances in getting that back. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know that type of law when it comes to property like that and how it goes down after somebody's death. But if her name wasn't mentioned or any of the children weren't mentioned, in the will, does that attest to her having some sort of legal rights to the home? But Bishop would just, you know, took that as just set in stone that we prayed and we cried and it's just, you know, up in the air and with the wind. I knew that that wasn't the end of it. And I'm really liking this fire that Lady May had that has now. That, that fast really gave her the clarity to say, you know what? God said I needed the strength for what's about to happen now. And maybe he gave her the strength so she can tell her truth. I don't know. It's really good to see Zara and Sophia back on good terms and them talking and them chit-chatting. I guess Zora said, hey, you, you, you did me wrong with some things and I did you wrong with some things. Now we're even. I'm happy to see that the writers are winging out these unnecessary characters hopefully they've written out Dante and they've written out Nikki and gotten rid of those characters visually. It was refreshing to see that they spoke of Dante, but we didn't have to see him and how they spoke of Nikki, but maybe we won't see them anymore. I hope we don't have to see them anymore, but it was just good how the writing is just mentioning people without having to insert all of these unnecessary characters. I talked about that in season four. So glad, I'm so glad that the writers thought the same way that I did and said, hey, let's just start, let's just start winging out unnecessary people. It's very evident that Phil 
has this gut feeling that, uh uh-oh, something is in the works. And it's just unfortunate that I think that Charity said too much too soon based upon emotion because that seemed as if that really clicked his curiosity and why was she so confident? And what does she mean a few days before H&H and before this and before that? It's really gonna have him research what she meant by that because you gotta forget As much as Charity is passionate about being AP, he's just as passionate as being the lead and what he's worked years for. I mean, he's marrying Judy, he's doing all this stuff, he's written sermons for Bob so many years. So it wouldn't shock me that he'll go above and beyond to reach out to Bill. It won't surprise me to say, hey, can you dig a little deeper? They may have some information. And what is the plan B just in case they have some info? I really think Phil, within the next few episodes, is not going to be this strong person that Charity wants him to be, maybe, but he's trying to protect his investments as well. Speaking of Bob, where is he? He's doing a really good job of laying low and not being seen or heard. What does he have in the works? I mean, you got to think about it. He he finally had the situation handled with Calvary and the church and all of that. And he's building up this idea of running for senator. But where is he? I would love to know where he is. And I'm really concerned for Darius. He's going to Vegas. They already made you lose your job. You're already getting into the hot waters of politics, which is very, very corrupt. I mean, they'll do any and everything to get where they're trying to go and diminish anything in their way. Hence his career with the newspaper. I'm kind of frightened for him and I hope he doesn't get hurt in Vegas. I really think that Yousef will be the kapow that we need when it comes to information. He's laid low for many years, and I really think he will be that access to getting them the documents, the information that they need. Because when Grace mentioned his wife, he was still very defensive and adamant that that's my ex-wife, and she's been gone for over 20 years. So the fact that he's saying that's my ex-wife, get it right but he's saying that that's kind of disrespectful you bring that up it's been 20 years i really really think that the reason why film phil and him aren't speaking probably because it has a lot to do with that h and h mess not just because he's muslim but the fact that he probably witnessed his son doing a lot of backstabbing deceitful stuff for the sake of that church. He probably knows the beginning stages of when Phil started to get associated with Bob. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if his father is the key to getting not only the church, but getting legal information because he's been laying low and staying really, really disconnected with Phil. There's reasoning behind that. So I'm super excited to know what does he know and what does he have in his back pocket? It was really interesting to me how Jacob could not verbally say at that moment that he forgave Carissa. He told his mom that, hey, in the future I'll forgive. It's something that I need to do because of things that I've done. But I just can't bear the thought of after forgiving her and going back into that thing called marriage. It was a wonderful thing by the writers to say, just because you forgive and just because you know you're moving past the moment doesn't mean you have to go back into a situation that you're not happy with and he was fed up i mean i think it was over even before the affairs because if you notice seasons back before we really were introduced to what he was doing their passion and their connection wasn't there so it was this idea that they were just sticking together because not only of image but just trying to stick it out for marriage sake but it was refreshing because i'm tired of them trying to fake it like they're really in love because they're really not let me know what you think i wanted to show my face in this recap and review um let me know if you don't want to see my face if you're like girl we just want you to do the recaps and reviews and just give us just the straight information the photos and just your voice i want to see your face girl let me know i'm trying new things because technically i am still a rookie when it comes to youtube world and i want to try different things different shots different angles different everything just to see what's your cup of tea
tea. Let me know your comments. I absolutely love your comments listed down below. I love to read them and I respond to everyone, even if we don't agree. Make sure that you look at those playlists and binge watch. There are so many shows, branch out of something that you might not be comfortable with and just refresh your eyes with something new. Look at Netflix original series, Tiger King. Look at Hulu's original series, Wu-Tang and American Saga, Star Trek, Picard. There's so much more and we have a lot to look forward to in the future. We do have Queen Sugar. We do have Handmaid's Tale. We do have more movies that have been released on Netflix. I have trailer reactions that are coming out. We have Tenet that's coming soon. And I'm just excited. So stay tuned. You guys hit that notification bell. And don't forget to like this video. And don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys. We're trying to reach that thousand subscriber mark. And tell your friends, tell your family, let everybody know that this is a family friendly channel. You'll know that you won't run, run across any vulgarity or any curse words or anything like that. Now, if it's an adult show, I still review it. But of course, I absentee things that you possibly would see literally looking at it but let me know what you think i love you guys stay tuned for more have a wonderful week please don't underestimate COVID 19 be precautious but not fearful until next time